Showbiz Today, weekdays, 5.30 Eastern on CNN. NFL Preview walks into week six with trade talk. Is George being sought by Seattle? Jeff burned his Atlanta bridges. It just is, it was a very difficult, unfortunate situation uh, that happened, and uh, I feel for him as much as, uh, as much as anything, but guess what? He'll survive, and so will we. Elsewhere in the arms race, Steve says he's ready, but Elvis could star in St. Louis. The AFC games are, in a word, intense. Johnny versus Junior, and Teacher versus Pupil. Plus, the Bills hope to pile up on Captain Comeback. Jets Raiders, the game you win may save your coach. And Jimmy cut buyers, but Keith delivering some parting shots. Also, the Packers and Bears renew a rivalry dating back three quarters of a century. All this and first time video of The Playmaker. Hi, everybody. Welcome to NFL Preview. Moving into October and week six of the season, I'm Vince Cellini, joined as always by James Lofton and Ron Meyer and Peter King in St. Louis for the 49er Ram game. He'll be with us shortly. But we begin our show where we began last week with just a slight twist. The trading deadline set for Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And the big question is, are there any takers for Jeff George? Jeff George, our subject matter once again on NFL Preview. Ron, you talked to your boy just recently, I think this morning, in fact. Well, does Jeff want to make a trade or want a trade to happen and is Seattle a player in this whole thing? Well, I woke Jeff up this morning and Vince, as you indicated, Seattle very much is a player. But here's what, and I can't emphasize this enough, here's the dilemma. Jeff's a vested veteran. He can veto any trade that is out there. So really, and he's looking at this, Seattle's not a great winner, always finishing fourth or fifth in a tough, tough division. Is there any other player out there that would like my services? For example, a guy gets hurt, the Falcons waive me, I go free agency after this trading deadline, Vince, and uh, I go on the open market and I can possibly get to a better team and end up with a Super Bowl ring and that's what he wants. Money's not the really overall factor here, he wants to go where he can win. All right, and again, Rick Meyer mentioned in a swap for Jeff George of the Falcons. I'll be with you in, in just a moment. But we, we do know this. George's days are numbered in Atlanta. Not only did the Falcons this week extend his suspension to four games, in a Saturday interview just before leaving for Detroit in the Lion game, Falcon coach June Jones told CNN his feelings on the suspension haven't wavered one bit. I did what I had to do to, to keep my team. And uh, uh, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I still feel the same way I do about Jeff George after the incident as I, as I did before. Uh, I felt like I so, you know, put a lot into my, uh, into Jeff George, myself, my heart, my soul, my, my whole team, everything, funneling to, to believe in, in that, that he was going to be the guy that, that take us down the road. Since I've been the head coach, team has been the biggest and we has been the biggest word that words that we can use and been my focus of getting this thing turned around and when you find out that that's been uh, compromised or that uh, someone challenges that that they are bigger than the team then everybody looks to the coach to see you know well let's find out how much this we thing really means to him now and so consequently you know the the situation uh, arose and uh, I dealt with it how I needed to deal with it and uh, uh, you know right or wrong I know that 10 years from now I'm not going to second guess my decision uh, on what I did uh, because I know it was the right thing. Well at no time in the interview did June Jones talk about a reconciliation bringing Jeff back to the Falcons in Seattle and Atlanta now we understand have put a moratorium on trade talks until Monday and then they'll see if they can work things out if it happens but James no Falcons came to Jeff George's side in this whole situation will the NFLPA come to his side well it's interesting because June Jones really did draw the line in the sand not only when he suspended him for the first time but when he extended it for four more weeks and I talked to an attorney at the NFL Players Association Jeff George will get his money back for the additional week suspended not the first week that'll be just a formality the interesting thing here is that they've given up on him so early you know this is an 0-4 ball club and this is a guy who June Jones said, hey, we put a lot of faith in him. You know, I trusted him like a son, but now he's going to be gone. And to be gone, they don't know what they're going to get from him. And Rick Meyer has been the guy who's been rumored about him. Mm -hmm. But up in Seattle, everyone wonders, what's wrong with Rick Meyer? You know, this is a guy who has Chris Warren in the backfield, good receivers and Brian Blades and Joey Galloway to throw to. And he has not been able to get it done for a various number of reasons. But when you look at Rick Meyer, he has the size, the speed, the strength. 
but everybody wonders about his skill level. And maybe a guy like June Jones, who has tutored a lot of quarterbacks extremely well, can bring out the skills in him to become a good NFL quarterback. Yeah, maybe bring out those intangibles that are missing in Seattle, right? Well, in talking with Jeff this morning, he wanted me to emphasize, he said, you know, I really look like a very selfish player in this particular case. He said, I hate that persona. I'm a team guy. I want to go someplace that just allows me to win. And when you talk about selfishness, he said, Ron, the money is not all that important. And we'll just see how it plays out from there. Well, wait a minute. It's easy to say the money is not important when you're going to average about $5 million well, a year. How, yeah. much, how many steaks can you eat at well, one time? I'll tell you, the interesting yeah. thing about both quarterbacks, George has been criticized at Atlanta for not finishing games in the fourth quarter. Myers got the oh. same criticism. He has four fourth quarter interceptions this year, although he did lead the Seahawks back to a win in Tampa Bay. Yeah, you can for what look, that's worth. And you, uh, like I alluded to earlier, you can look at the pluses and minuses for the guy. But the biggest minus, playing in that Notre Dame system, he's surrounded by so many great athletes, not only on the offensive line, but at running back and at wide receiver. And here's a guy who, once he got into the NFL, wasn't able to raise his level of play up to that above his teammates. Yeah, well, look what Ron Paulus, see your future. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have to break it on NFL preview. Then we'll return with a 49er fuss at quarterback. Steve Young has been chopping at the bit to play, but will Elvis get the nod today at St. Louis? The very latest on the Niners quarterback quandary. And later in the show, in just a mess of a game, the Raiders drop by the Jets. And if Mike White loses, should he really go back to Oakland? At BASF, we don't make the skates. We make them ride smoother. We don't make the car, we make it more colorful. We don't make the shampoo, we make it gentler. We don't make the helmet, we make it more comfortable. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. When you're choosing a name for your baby, you want one you'll feel good about for a long, long time. It's the same when you're choosing life insurance for yourself. You want something that will endure. When you go with State Farm, you get a life insurance company that has always received the highest possible ratings for financial strength. Which means State Farm is one name that'll sound just as good when your kids are growing up as it does today. State Farm understands life. The Wilsons tried almost everything to make their house more attractive to buyers, but it just didn't sell until they called our ERA office. I told them about the ERA home warranty plan that would help their house sell faster by giving the buyer peace of mind. It helped make their house the most appealing buy on the block. The ERA home warranty plans, just the kind of help you'd expect from a friend. It doesn't take long to sell a house if you call the right people. Call 1-800-367-1994. Got any Tylenol, Jill? Oh, when did you switch to Tylenol? when my doctor told me some pain relievers could irritate my stomach. Really? Pain relievers? Yeah, my doctor said that aspirin and even ibuprofen can sometimes irritate your stomach. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. But Tylenol doesn't, and it works great. To avoid the chance of stomach irritation, Tylenol is the pain reliever recommended most by doctors. How's your stomach? Stuffed. Oh. Tylenol, <laughs> the pain reliever hospitals use most. One chance. It's what every player waits for the moment he can step into the spotlight. Some fail, some succeed. One young quarterback emerged from the shadows to save a game and is now a Pro Bowl performer. Jeff Blake made the most of his one chance. Oilers, Bengals. Tonight at 7, the NFL's on TNT. Don't miss a game. Welcome back to the show. The Niners and the Rams, a series that coined the phrase, same old sorry-ass Rams. The teams meet for the second time this season today at the Trans World Dome. San Francisco has won the last 12 meetings, including the 34-0 waxing in Week 2. Now, we know the Niners can beat the Rams. We don't know who'll start at quarterback. Elvis Gerbach was set to go, then he had back spasms that forced him out of Thursday and Friday workouts. Steve Young sat out last week with a groin injury, claims he's okay, but he's being rested for what head coach George Seifert calls the, quote, long haul, unquote. Young, he says, hey, I'm living in the now. Every week I try to make myself available to go play, and then he has to make the decision on what's best for myself over the long haul, which I'm not necessarily overly concerned about, you know. I, I take it week to week. 
Well, this is going to be the classic game time decision to see who'll start a quarterback. The Niners do have Green Bay next Monday night. Do you save the guy? You know, do you play the guy now? James, what do you think? I think it's a thought, but the one thing that's really going on here in the back of Steve Young's mind is he being replaced like he replaced Joe Montana. And for Elvis Gerbach, this guy really wants to play to show his wares. He is in the last year of his contract, so the only really back spasms that he's worried about in the future are if his, if his wallet gets a little too heavy <laughs> and it starts to lay on I his know. back. I know. I can start pulling on the back muscle there. Ron, did you ever save a quarterback for a big game as Seifert did, apparently is trying to do? All right. Well, Vince, let me tell you this. <laughs> my my association with teams, I needed all hands on deck at all times <laughs> to play. But if I were in this situation, if I was in the situation that is now facing the 49ers, I'd definitely hold out uh, Young and save him for the big game against the Packers because Gerbach's a very good player. He can get them through this game and they can beat the Rams with Gerbach in there. You're right. Well, last time they met, the Rams were held to 105 total yards. And Tony Banks was thrown into the fire in that situation, a goal line with his back against his own goal line and got caught for a safety. Do you think that the young quarterback, this rookie quarterback, will be better this time around? Well, he'll be better this time. And last week he had a great outing against the Arizona Cardinals. And I talked to Rich Brooks this week and I said, you know, this guy looked really cool out there in the football field. And Brooks said, I was thinking the same thing too. I talked to Banks after. He talked to Banks after the game. He said, well, how'd you feel? He said, I thought I was going to throw up every down, coach, but I made it through the ball game. Well, the Rams are the worst offense in the league right now, and uh, Lawrence Phillips, their big draft pick, 2.2 yards a carry. That's not going to get it done. But that's not going to stop Brooks. He's going to continue to play the rookies. He's added an additional rookie, Ernie Cronwell, to the lineup. So they're going to start six rookies on offense. And Brooks really feels that if the offensive line can just play a little better, and I think he's maybe looking for the long haul and into next year, that this will be a dynamite offense. Well, they can't play worse than they did in the first game. That's for sure. Now, meeting for the first time ever are the Panthers and the Vikings, both of them coming off their first loss a week ago. This is the Metrodome, where the Central co-leaders have won six in a row. Now, the Panther office took a big hit when rookie Tim Biakabatuka suffered a torn left ACL last week in the Jacksonville loss. Lost for the season. They picked up Leroy Hoare this week, but Anthony Johnson will start today. But, James, how big is that loss on the defensive line? A fellow named Mike Fox has that arch injury. He's out like three to four weeks. Yeah, and that's really going to hurt them because Mike Fox is a guy who has the capacity to get it done. And what he does better than anybody else on that defensive line is he sucks up two people. He may be six foot eight, 300 pounds, not a speed rusher, but watch here. He gets one-on-one -on -one blocking, but then the other guy is so concerned with blocking Fox and helping out his offensive guard that he lets the sacker come in. And Greg Cragen strips the ball from Brunel. But Mike Fox is going to be missed on that. Les Miller will replace him, a guy who's a veteran but was out of football last year but has been very familiar with uh, Dom Capers and his staff. All right, now, Ron, the other defensive line, the Vikings, they're 19 sacks, second in the NFL. Maybe you could talk a little bit about their leader on that defensive line. Well, I have. And talking to their leader, I did call Foge Fazio, the defensive coordinator for the Vikings, and he just raved. I've never heard a coach talk about a player like he talks about John Randall, their big inside defensive tackle. Six and a half sacks leading the NFL. Since he's come into the NFL, he is one half sack behind the great Reggie White. Great leader, enthusiastic, loves football, never missed a, a, a mini camp. They just, uh, Foge just went on and on about this guy called it his marvelous warrior out there a little brave heart if you don't mind <laughs> <laughs> very nice without the painted faces yeah. I don't think hey the Vikings are at Tampa Bay before they're by so they're looking at six and one before the break so it's a big game for them all right uh, much more on tap in this hour-long NFL appetizer we'll be back with the winners and the losers in the AFC West very tight race going on and this guy's still making opponents say ow Today, Junior Seau and the Chargers match up with Denver. Number 55 is always a mile high, excitement-wise. I can't believe I'm losing my hair back here. Like father, like son. Yeah, right. Look, if you want to regrow some hair, check this out. Rogaine? Don't you need a prescription? Not anymore. How's it work? Rogaine goes to the root of your hair and, for some people, gets it to grow. What have you got to lose? Nothing, I guess, except more hair. It's been easy to use. <laughs> and it's starting to work. See, there's room for growth in every relationship. Rogaine, medically proven to regrow hair. Got any Tylenol, Cal? Getting one of those headaches. Hmm. You taking Tylenol now? Yeah. My doctor recommended it when he told me I have an ulcer. No kidding. Mm -hmm. My wife has an ulcer. My doctor said Tylenol won't aggravate my ulcer. It sure stops my headaches. You know, I don't know if Cash talked to her doctor about this. If you have an ulcer, Tylenol is the pain reliever recommended most by doctors. Talk to your doctor. Don't you just love the rain? Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most.
is time to go far from the lights of the blazing electric metropolis and look up. The Isuzu Trooper, a standing two-ton reminder that the world is large and there are stars above it. Imagine a news network that covers sports, the way Sports Illustrated covers sports. And it covered the world of sports like CNN covers the world. Introducing CNNSI, around-the-clock coverage of sports news from around the world. 24 hours a day, CNNSI will take viewers to where sports news is happening. Utilizing the vast resources of CNN and Sports Illustrated, the world's premier sports publication. Together, CNNSI will offer viewers the most immediate and comprehensive sports news coverage available. CNNSI will call upon the finest team of print and broadcast journalists, editors, and sports analysts ever assembled, capturing all the drama and all of the spectacle of sport, the personalities and the controversies, the big wins and the heartbreaking defeats. No matter where sports is making news, CNNSI will be there. Call your cable or satellite company and ask them about CNNSI. Nice to see you. That can't begin to describe how the Cowboys felt about getting the playmaker back in the fold. Michael Irvin returned to Cowboy practice. Details on what that means to Troy and company coming up later in the show. But back to the matchups. Another biggie in the AFC West. San Diego, fresh off that upset of the Chiefs, traveling to Denver to meet fellow 4-1, the Broncos. Denver's won 11 of the last 13 at home in this series. After last week's thrilling 22-19 win over Kansas City, Junior has his boys of Bolt all charged up again. In his recipe for winning, head coach Bobby Ross drops some old ingredients, and the proof is in the pudding. CNN's Brent Weber tells us what's cooking now in San Diego. It was game three this season of 42-10 shellacking at Green Bay. Last year's Chargers, a team devoid of the unity which helped take them to Super Bowl 29, might have tried to laugh it off. But the 96 Chargers weren't laughing and instead tapped into something that was missing at times a year ago, as the Raiders found out in week four and the Chiefs discovered last Sunday. It's, it's pride and, and, and guts. You know, you just got to, you know, when you... When you take it on the chin like we did in Green Bay, you know, you, you gotta, gotta have some, some kind of character about yourself and your team to, to bounce back. Expected and unexpected changes profoundly affected the way the Chargers approached this season. For the second year in a row, the franchise had to deal with the death of a player. The previous winner, linebacker David Griggs, died in an auto accident. And on May 11th of this year, running back Rodney Culver and his wife were among those lives lost in the value jet plane crash. Football is a team game, it's a family game, and I think we try to really relate to it in, in terms of the way we run our football program. And, and uh, obviously, if families are, are face adversity, they have to look it in the eye and, and come back from it and go on. Uh, that's, that's what we call fortitude, it's, it's, you know, the strength of the individual as it relates to the adversity. Personnel decisions served to pull them together, too. Chargers brass felt that the team which defended the AFC title a year ago did not display the across-the-board work ethic necessary to contend. So there were some eyebrow-raising departures. Among those no longer part of Ross's program, wide receiver Sean Jefferson and all pros at Natron Means at running back and Leslie O'Neill at defensive end. The guys that are here uh, enjoy coming to work every day, enjoy walking into the locker room in the morning, enjoy being around the other people that are in the locker room. Uh, you have a lot of fun on the practice field, enjoy what you're doing on the practice field. It's not a pain to go out and practice every day because you enjoy it. The elimination of those individual factions that plagued this team in 95 have actually served to bring out the Chargers' most dominant personality in 96. Now, perhaps more than ever, this is Junior Seau's team. I do know this, he's asserting himself a lot more, and that's good, that's positive. Uh, and, and you never have to worry about Junior. I mean, he's not a guy that's going to just talk a good game. He's going to do it, too. And that's on the practice field as well as in the ball game. By losing Leslie O'Neill, losing Natron Means, and those two marquee players, you know, it, it, it kind of tells us, as, a, as the nucleus, I mean, me, the Stan Humphreys, me, the Reuben Davis, me, Sean Lee, and, and Harper, uh, you, you can go on. But the nucleus in, in which we kept, we now have to lead. 
For a fresh look at Seau's leadership, look no further than last week's win over KC. The five-time pro bowler had a sack among his dozen tackles, pulled in two interceptions, and his most critical play didn't even show in the stats when junior repositioned defensive end Chris Mims to set up the blocked field goal, which sealed San Diego's win. They're looking for me to, uh, to guide and uh, for me to perform and for me to uh, be vocal and, and do the things that I need to do, you know, in my own right mind to be right so, you know, I, I can lead by example at the same time. The Chargers go to Denver this week, ranking just 17th in total offense and dead last in total defense. But this team no longer stands for an emphasis on statistics anyway. Ross and his Chargers like to keep it simple. Four wins, one loss. A tie for first in the AFC West. In San Diego, Brent Weber, CNN Sports. Thank you, Brent. You know, Sam Ritigliano, the old Browns coach, used to say, statistics off of losers. But there's an interesting stat. The worst defense in the league, San Diego, going against the number one offense in Denver, and 16 of John Elway's career wins have come against the Chargers. Why is it clicking for Denver right well, now? Well, I talked to Mike Shanahan this week, and he's having a hard time figuring it out, too. But everything is working for them on offense, defense, and special teams. But offensively, you can look at the big guys, Elway, Terrell Davis, Shannon Sharp, Anthony Miller. Those guys are having banner years. But the offensive line has been opening up Emmett Smith-like holes for Terrell Davis. And I think that has really catapulted this team from a good offense to a great offense. And, Ron, defensively, this ball club has really stepped it up and played well. Well, James, it certainly have. You know what has impressed me about this Mike Shanahan coach football team? And, Vince, wasn't he the one-time coach of the Raiders? Oh, well. <laughs> well but anyway, right. yeah, we'll go <laughs> yeah, on with right. that. But anyway, right. we get back to Mike. He has got this team playing in the AFC like the 49ers are playing in the NFC because it's great balance. He's playing the top of the league in defense, the top of the league in offense, got the leading rusher, and he leads the league with 20 sacks. This type of football team is earmarked to go into the Super Bowl if they continue to play like that. I like what Shanahan's accomplishing out there at Mile High. And at Mile High, they have three ball games this month. One by, but all three games at Mile High, so they can stretch that record out. Yeah, big October coming up for them. And the Chargers have given up 11 touchdown passes. That's tied with Arizona for a league high. And I'm sure Elway knows this uh, from all the scouting <laughs> reports. We'll pick it later in the show. But now a game that has to be played. It's on the schedule. It's official. The Raiders and the Jets, they combined for a 1-9 record this year. They're playing at the Meadowlands. Now, last week, it was like a haunting. At Chicago, ex-Raider pro bowler Jeff Jager, 30-yard field goal, 11 seconds left. The Raiders handed their fourth loss, and he looked right at Al Davis and the Raiders and gave him one of these. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> so, so here's the big question, guys. Is, is this it for Mike White? Should he drop this ball game in the Meadowlands? I mean, is this, is this the hook? Well, Vance, I tell you, whoever loses to the Jets, that's going to be a death blow to that <laughs> coach. I'll tell you that, and it could happen this week. You know, what's been talked about all preseason was that Joe Bugle, the former head coach of the Cardinals and offensive line coach, highest paid assistant, uh, mind, Lee, or mind you, in the NFL. But, you know, in the offseason, Jimmy Johnson wanted to get this guy to Miami, and that kind of set the raise the hair and ruffled the fur of Al Davis. So, Vince, what I'm saying is Joe Bugle, in the poor play of his offensive line, he's fallen out of, uh, out of favor with Al. Look for Rusty Tillman, the guru of special teams. If there is going to be a move made, Rusty Tillman will go as the head coach of the Raiders if they move Mike White out. Uh, huh? it's a, and it's a, it's a big if also because the company line coming out of the silver and black is that Mike White is okay and secure in what he's doing. They, they feel like they played well offensively. They're third in yards in offense. In defense, they're in the middle of the pack. But what has really killed this ball club, 11, minus 11 in the takeaway giveaway, 48 penalties, but that's always a Raider deal. But 4,000 below average in Jeez. attendance at home the last two ballgames, if anything, that could cause Al Davis to start wearing something other than black. <laughs> well, you always look in the, in the stands if you're an owner, but doesn't it reflect the discipline of the team when you have all these penalties? What it discipline? And yeah, well, that reflects <laughs> on the head coach. So that is a direct for, reflection. I yeah, agree. Look for Mike White coach. to struggle. Well, well, the Jets have no mercy for anyone. They don't feel sorry for anybody because <laughs> now for this game, uh, Jeff Graham, wide receiver, doubtful with, a, with an injury. Uh, also, Keyshawn Johnson on three to four weeks. He had an injured, injured his knee in practice, and Marvin Jones on defense out five to six weeks with a knee. So the Jets are just saying, come fly with us. We're, we're going places or not. When we return on NFL Preview, someone has a bone to pick with Dolphin head coach Jimmy Johnson, and that someone is a former Dolphin player. Some angry verbal salvos fired Jimmy's way. Wait till you hear what a former player cut this week said in Miami.
Inside this precious package is the photo and personal history of an actual living, breathing, wonderful child who urgently needs your love. Hello, I'm Walter Coppage for Children International. Sponsorship is the most loving, personal way to help a needy child overseas. And I want to send you this kit absolutely free and with no obligation so you can see for yourself one little boy or little girl waiting to be sponsored. You'll get to know that child and find out if sponsorship is for you. You're not obligated, so call for your free kit now. Tell us if you prefer a boy or a girl, and you may choose your child's country. We'll select an individual child especially for you and rush you her photo and personal history, information about her country, answers to your questions, and more. Just look at this little child who lives in poverty in the Philippines. She needs nutritious food and medical care. This little boy struggles to survive in a disease-infested slum. Here's a child from the Dominican Republic. And this little girl desperately needs a chance to go to school. Won't you call now? This isn't some abstract concept like millions of starving children. This is a real child. And you will hold his picture and learn how you can change his life. Later, if you decide to become a sponsor, your monthly gift is only $12, and you'll get letters from your child, updated photos, and more. This affordable $12 program is possible because we look for ways to keep costs down without sacrificing the care your child receives. But this precious package is free, and there's no obligation. So call now for the photo and case history of one little child who needs you. Call 1-800-824-5556. That's 1-800-824-5556. Caution, do not stand in front of oncoming scarlet and gray traffic. That Ohio State offensive line just chewed up another victim. That was a trouncing of Penn State. And was it good enough to move Ohio State into the top spot on the new coaches poll? Find out when we present the new USA Today CNN Top 25 a little bit later in the show. The Indianapolis Colts, do you believe Indy is 10-2 against the rest of the AFC East over its last 12 games? The two losses to today's opponent, the Buffalo Bills. It's at Orchard Park where the chill is already in the air. Buffalo has won 7 of 8, in fact, against the Colts in Buffalo and James. Battle of Michigan quarterbacks, Harbaugh against Todd Collins. Collins looked very good in helping to beat Dallas a couple of weeks ago. Well, Buffalo has about a 50-page playbook, and against <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys, Collins got pages 1 through 5, and that was about <laughs> it. And it's not really a knock on him. Dallas has a great defense. But this week, after the bye, he's going to get up to about page number 25. But the big concern for the Buffalo Bills organization, the fans, and everybody around there is Jim Kelly. They're watching this guy almost break down in front of their eyes. A shoulder here, an elbow there the knees and then in practice a hamstring there are a lot of people wondering if at the end of 1996 should Jim Kelly just call it quits that is that is a good question and when you get the backup to play well and win a game for you that question is always raised huge game for Buffalo they host Miami next week Ron Indianapolis they've been a gutsy bunch they've had a lot of injuries offensively defensively but they're allowing only 12 and a half points a game on defense they've given up 50 points total this year why? Well, Vince, this is a perfect example of a football team complementing one another. What you have, I'm telling you, what you have with Indianapolis is you've got a conservative offense which features Marshall Falk coming back and running the ball, but that's complemented by Jim Johnson. That's right, the other Jimmy Johnson yeah. in this case. His defense, he's taken over from Vince Tobin. He's been the linebacker coach two years prior to this, so he hasn't changed a thing. But you have Harbaugh, of ultra-conservative game plan, doesn't get the team in trouble. This allows a defense to go out there and play tremendously tough football, particularly against the run where they lead the entire NFL against the rush, forcing that other team to pass, and you've got them right where you want them. Look for the Colts to really play well. Yeah, they're giving up only 73 yards a game rushing-wise, so we'll pick this one later on in the show, by the way. Now an incestuous battle football-wise. Dennis Erickson returns to Miami, where he and Dolphin quarterback Craig Erickson won a national championship in 1989. This after Dennis took over for Jimmy down at Coral Gables. Anyway... This is the pros. Miami looks to move to 4-1 against 1-4 Seattle. And what a week in Dolphin land. Jimmy did not enjoy the bye week, or how was team practice? I think weak minds had a lot to do with them not practicing the way I wanted them to practice. Weak minds. <laughs> I love that. Weak <laughs> minds. I know all about that. Jimmy, he was just a wild man this week. He traded for tight end Troy Drayton, released foot fullback, turned tight end Keith Byers. 
and buyers didn't go quietly. The 11 year veteran cut loose with this statement on Jimmy Johnson. His program and his system, if you look at his track record, it's firecrackers instead of bombs. If he doesn't get it done quick, Jimmy won't be there. Because of the way he is, he doesn't have the endurance to go the long haul. He's good in small doses. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that statement, but if you talk to some Miami veterans, and I did down in Miami, there's some sentiment there that Jimmy loves his rookies because he can work them hard and he can intimidate them. But the proof's in the pudding, I guess, and he gets it done, right? Uh, I, I believe he does. And as a veteran ball player who got cut late in his career, I cried too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you about Jimmy, and this is a, Vince, this is a real important thing in my mind. Jimmy thinks youth is a plus, not a minus. He doesn't like those old vets who thinks that years of service in the league automatically rewards them with a spot on the roster. That's out. He takes the youngest players in the league, takes them to Super Bowls, wins Super Bowls, and he likes to raise his own, so to speak. So that's the only way they know what to do is the Jimmy Johnson way. It's a plus in his mind, not a minus. Uh, Keith sounded a little bitter there. Oh, he was? Were you that bitter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> okay, good stat on Miami. They're 7-0 and after the bye week. John Freeze is starting for the Seahawks instead of Rick Meyer because Rick's going to Atlanta, we hear. Not him. We don't know about that. Coming up on NFL Preview, the Cowboys hoping they've regained some of their swagger. We do know this. Dion won't be double duty when the boys hook up with Arizona, at least not like before. And remember Kajana Carter? I mean, here was the kid who was going to tear up the NFL. Well, it hasn't happened. Carter's giving way to another Bengal back, earning his stripes. We'll have that story, too. Today on Late Edition, a preview of the debate and a mock debate of our own with Bill Bennett and Mario Cuomo. Late Edition, today, noon Eastern on CNN. It's 40 Winks 19-year anniversary sale. Every Sealy mattress and box spring, including Sealy Posturepedic, in every size and firmness is on sale. Save 50 to 65% off department store retail prices. Plus, during the 40 Winks 19-year anniversary sale, save an additional 19% off the already discounted sale price. At 40 Winks, you'll get free delivery, free setup, free removal, plus a free bed frame with any Sealy set. The 40 Winks anniversary sale. 40 Winks delivers free, but at these prices, you may want to take your Sealy set home yourself. Thank you for calling Sam Satellite City. I've got some questions about that direct satellite system that I just bought. Yes, ma'am. Why can't I get all my favorite channels like I used to get with cable? To receive all the same channel combinations which are currently available on your cable system, you'll probably have to subscribe to more than one programming supplier. Will that cost more than cable? It just might. You didn't tell me that. You didn't ask. And why can't I get my local stations anymore? To get local programming, you'll also need a regular antenna. A so regular flavor. antenna. We have an excellent selection of regular antennas. Comcast, the best place for your TV. I want my cable. Showbiz Today, weekdays, 5.30 Eastern on CNN. Word at Cowboy Camp this week, wasn't it great seeing 88? His suspension for violating the league's, league's substance abuse policy is over, and Michael Irvin rejoined the Cowboys for Thursday's practice. Dallas was 2-3 and three in his absence. Could have been worse. Irvin watched it unfold just like any other frustrated Cowboy fan. You always want to make sure your quarterback ha have that total confidence in you. And, and, and out of all the things, that, that, that was the toughest thing to watch. You know, when I'm watching Troy and, and, and watch his frustrations and when things weren't going right. I mean, that was the toughest thing for me to watch. So Mike's return lessens the load for all-time Sanders. Uh, after five games, Deion Neary missed a snap. He participated in 80% of the Cowboy plays, but Irvin's back to assume his role as the playmaker. James, you live in the Dallas area, and I, I understand that Michael couldn't wait to get back to uh, Valley Ranch. Could well, it? I saw him working out before the uh, suspension was lifted, but right after the suspension lifted, 12:01 after the Monday night football game, he's over there running on the practice field. And I saw him, he had on pads and weighted power pants to, to work out additionally hard. So this guy is ready to play football. He is a hard worker, there's no question about that. Ronnie lives up to his play his name, his nickname, the playmaker, doesn't he? It fits. Man, does he. I, I love this guy. He brings such an enthusiasm and love for the game. But look at the numbers. The Cowboys only had 20 or two passes over 20 yards. They're woefully at, a, at 33 and a third percent on conversions on third down. Down. Michael, 111 catches last year, 88 of them went for first downs. Get him in there and throw the ball to him right away. Yeah, first downs keep drives alive, which results in points. Right. That's, that's Dallas's way. All right, brings us to the complete NFC Eastern Division snapshot now. And who knew after five games it would look like this? Washington at 4-1, and one, and then Philly 3-2, and two, and then the 2-3s and threes are there, Arizona, Dallas, and the Giants. And, and James, really, though, the Eagles, they missed a golden opportunity back on Monday night. They had a wounded Dallas team at home. 
beat them there because they might have missed their chance to beat Dallas this season, and it could be a turning point in their season. Yeah, and I see three problems the rest of the season for the Philadelphia Eagles. Number one, their run defense. They're a little small up front, only about 280 pounds on that defensive line, and they were worn down by the Dallas Cowboys. The same thing will happen against the Washington Redskins. Number two, too much Ricky Waters on offense. They need to get Christy Jones and Irving Fryer involved in the mix. And number three, who's going to play quarterback? Mm -hmm. Granted, Rodney Pete wasn't an all-pro, but at least he was able to patch together this offense. And Ty Detmer and Mark Rippon, I don't think they can get the job done. Mm. All right, now the Washington Redskins, uh, Ron, and at 4-1 and one now, it could get better if you look at their schedule. Oh, they really could get better. You know, you inherit this easy schedule, which they have the Patriots and they have Arizona, and they got a few of those so-called teams coming up. But the thing I love about the Redskins, they stayed with Norv Turner. 3-13 and 13 his first year, 6-10 and 10 his second year. No panic. Biggest decision was Farrat over Schuler. He made that, and he has won seven out of his last nine games. Stay the course, Norv. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Stay the course. You got it. Hey, you know, guys, guess who's here? Sports Illustrated senior writer Peter King is with us. He's covering that Rams and 49ers game in St. Louis. Peter, how are you? Good morning, Vince. We thought this would be a good time to bring into the discussion now and talking about the NFC East and how about those Arizona Cardinals and injecting a couple of guys into the offense that have really come around in, in uh, LaShawn Johnson and also Kent Graham. I mean, these guys are back-to-back -back NFC Offensive Players of the Week, and suddenly the Cards are on, on a little winning streak, aren't they? And Vince, this just in. Bill Bidwell made a great decision. <laughs> Might be his first one since moving to Arizona. But what has happened there is really a tribute to just stability. And, and Vince Tobin is one of the most stable guys who I ever met covering the NFL. 19 of the 21 years he's been in coaching on any level, he's had a winning season. Now, they still might have one of the two or three worst talented teams in the league, but I really think that being a stable team and being a team that Vince Tobin can get these guys up every week, I think they're probably going to win six because a lot of times you can get fat in December with other teams laying down. No question about that. And now the Giants are taking some of the heat uh, off of them and giving it to the Jets in the metropolitan area. And I guess they're looking long-term rather than short-term, aren't they? That's been the Giants' point all along. I don't think Dan Reeves will be around to see the fruits of, of who's being drafted by these guys. This week, they may sign their 17th out of 22 starters for the next two years. They're trying to sign Michael Strahan, an underrated defensive end, to a four-year, $12 million contract. And if they get that done, I think what we're going to see here, Vince, is really as mu more than uh, a judgment of Dan Reeves coaching, we're going to see a referendum on general manager George Young and personnel guy Tom Boister's ability to judge talent. All right, thank you, Peter. We'll see you a little bit later on in the show. And remember when the NFC East was the class oh, yeah. division in the league? No longer. No longer, that's, that's for sure. We take a two-minute timeout, and then we return with some arrowheads pointed at the men of steel. Kansas City prepares for a Monday nighter against dangerous Pittsburgh. But just how much punch is in that Chiefs offense? We'll find out when Marcus and company entertain car power. Tree. Got any Tylenol, Jill? Oh, when did you switch to Tylenol? When my doctor told me some pain relievers could irritate my stomach. Really? Pain relievers? Yeah, my doctor said that aspirin and even ibuprofen can sometimes irritate your stomach. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. But Tylenol doesn't, and it works great. To avoid the chance of stomach irritation, Tylenol is the pain reliever recommended most by doctors. How's your stomach? Stuff. Oh. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. This is the place to turn for complete coverage of live breaking news wherever it occurs. This is the place for lively debate. From the right and the left. This is the place where you can speak out and your voice will be heard. This is the place to turn for television's most reliable coverage of business and financial news. 
This is the place for lively conversation with top newsmakers and celebrities and your phone calls. This is the place to turn for the most complete view of the events shaping your world today. This is the place to turn for interviews, conversation, both sides of the issues, fashion and design, entertainment news, the world of sports, business and financial news. This is CNN. 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 This this is CNN. This is CNN. This is CNN. What are you guys looking at? <laughs> <laughs> AFC powers clash again Monday night when the Chiefs host the Pittsburgh Steelers at Arrowhead. Crunch these numbers. The Chiefs 41 and 9 at home in the 1990s. The Steelers are 9 and 2 on Monday night over the same time period. The question for the Chiefs strategist is coping with Cordell. Cordell Stewart was productive slash dangerous slash deceptive. Marty Schottenheimer is pulling out all the stops to deal with number 10. I think probably first and foremost is the unknown. I mean, you just don't know where he's liable to show up at any particular time. And um I was wondering if maybe they could get him to go back and play for Colorado for a week or something. Uh. Yeah, that's big time. That's big time humor from Marty. That's comedy right there. Uh, James, when you prepare for Cordell Stewart, though, how do you do it? I mean, or can you do it? What do opponents see? It's amazing. Stats lie. Here's a guy who has only gained 175 yards receiving and rushing, but he hurts you every time he's on the football field. You put a defensive back on him, one of your nickel guys, he can beat them. Lined up in the backfield, he can beat any linebacker. And don't put him under the center. You make the whole defense sweat. All right, Ron. Now, Terrell Davis of Denver ran all over Kansas City. And now, three-time 100-yard uh, gainer, Jerome Bettis, comes rolling in. He's the second-leading rusher behind Davis in the AFC. So can Kansas City stop this guy? I'm telling you, big Jerome Bettis. When you look at him, and he's five-point yards a carry average, and you think of what Davis in, in Denver did to him, you shudder. The Pittsburgh, this is going to be a classic matchup on the grass in Arrowhead on Monday night. The two best teams in the AFC going against each other and teacher versus pupil when you get to Schottenheimer mm -hmm. and Coward. Great, great ball game. Give me a quick pick, both of you guys. Quick uh, pick? Oh, man, that's like going to be Ron. tough. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to go Kansas City right. by one point. Ooh, yes. that's, good. that's a good pick. Steelheads. Steelers? That's good. All right. Sunday night on TNT, they said I was too young to host the pregame show, but what they couldn't measure was my heart. Don't miss a game. America's guest. How was that? Good. That wasn't bad. You know what I was Very doing nice. there? I was doing Very the guy nice. who does the promos. Emmy. America's guest, the Houston Oilers, visits Synergy Field in Cincinnati to meet the Bengals in an AFC Central battle. In the battle of network running backs, Garrison Hurst has stepped in as the new starter at running back. He's unseated Kajana Carter. Hurst averaging 3.7 yards per carry as opposed to Carter's 2.3. Uh, Peter King outside the Trans World Dome in St. Louis, and there must be more to it than stats. What's the story in the Bengal backfield, Peter, with this switch? Well, Vince, I think anybody who has watched the Bengals in the first month of the season clearly sees that not only is Garrison Hurst the best running back on the team right now, he's the best offensive player. You know, the Blake to Pickens thing has really fizzled because Jeff is struggling so much. And I think what has happened now with Kajana Carter, you know, whether he thinks he is or not, and he doesn't think he is, he thinks he's totally healthy, it looks like he's favoring his, his surgically repaired knee, and he's just not running hard. He's running very tentatively. One of their players on their team, one of their veterans, told me this week, hey, everybody on the team can see it, and we knew it was just a matter of time before Hurst was going to take over this job. Well, maybe the real runner to watch in this game will be Eddie George of the Oilers, fourth in the conference in rushing. And after this, Cincinnati at Pittsburgh at San Francisco, so they better get their act together on offense. But next on NFL Preview, the Lions then no place to play when it comes to stopping Detroit's air attack. Scott Mitchell has found the touch. The big left-hander is the ringmaster in an aerial circus. And the Falcons may watch Mitchell and his boys play catch this afternoon. There's excitement in the air. Soon, you can get a message and send a reply. Tomorrow, your pager will talk to you. Good luck, son. Motorola Flex technology is changing everything, providing speed and reliability. Flex, it's what makes Motorola the architects of a wireless world. Motorola, what you never thought possible. Hidden behind the legend lurks the person, Mike Tyson. A lot of complexity. Magic Johnson, Pete Rose, Hank Aaron, Bob Costas. You know, a great coach is like a great general. Don Shula or Colin Powell, leading men into battle. I've been interviewing people for over 35 years and have never seen a smile like Michael Jordan's. 
but behind that smile, hunger like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Best job in the world, no doubt about it. I believe we can cut taxes. Let's have a tax cut we can pay for. Tonight, it's the first debate between Bill Clinton. We're on the right track to the 21st century. And Bob Dole. I believe the torch should be passed in 1996. Followed by Larry King's exclusive interview with Ross Perot and other independent party candidates. Complete live coverage and post-debate analysis with Bernard Shaw and Judy Woodruff. Begins tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN, your campaign headquarters. Packers and Bears. For 75 years, they've been getting it together in 151st meeting today at Soldier Field. Now, when last they met, Packer quarterback Brett Favre threw five touchdown passes and a 35-28 win by the Pack. Favre has 16 touchdown passes through five games. He's on pace to throw for 51 this season, which would shatter Marino's record of 48. But that's a long way down the line. I think really the focus for Favre right now is his receiver Robert Brooks who left on the opening play last week with a concussion. What's the latest? Uh, I talked to Mike Holmgren and they thought that Brooks could have come back in the game. The reason they didn't bring him back is his second concussion in the last four weeks. They had a neurologist check him out this week. His head is, is still a little, it's clear, but he does have headaches. He wore the red vest, the red jersey practice this week, so he had no contact, but he will play this week. All right, interesting. The Packers have 22 takeaways, including seven fumble recoveries. Fumble recovery, Dave Craig's a quarterback. Yeah. You make that <laughs> no call. <doubt. laughs> All right, which brings us to other games on the menu. Jacksonville trying to drop the Saints to 0-6. The Pats are at Baltimore and Atlanta at Detroit. And Peter King, let's bring you back here on the Jim Mora watch in New Orleans. Is Jim Mora safe if he loses another game or two or three? Uh, Vince, I think he's definitely safe for the rest of the year. Tom Benson, the owner of the team, has seen five midseason Saint coaching changes, and that's been followed by combined records of 9 and 28. Last year, he flirted with Jimmy Johnson. There is no Jimmy Johnson out on the horizon this year. Morris safe for the year, even though I think his team is crumbling around him. Good sign of that this week was the Jim Mora Ray Zellers uh, disagreement. Uh, Zellers was suspended on Thursday. And this is, a, this is a dispute that goes back a long way. On the practice field in training camp this summer in Wisconsin, Jim Mora called Ray Zellers, well, let's just say he called him the euphemism for the word cat. And this, this week that thing flared again because Mora doesn't think that Zellers is as hurt as Zellers said he is. So they got into an on-field argument. Zellers gone for one week. And I just think this is, uh, this is typical of what's going on with this team right now. All right, Peter, good handling of that very delicate story <laughs> that took <laughs> place so with New Orleans. We have to break, but uh, coming back, we're going to have the top 25 poll. We'll reveal that to you along with a look at Peter King's NFL Notebook. We'll see what Peter has on the horizon. The scoops are for you next. Time now for our Athlete of the Week. Jeff Gordon continues to be just a flash to his fellow drivers. Sunday, the reigning Winston Cup champion won his 10th race of the year and his third straight as he took the final NASCAR event at North Wilkesboro Speedway. Athlete of the Week, brought to you by Discover. The Discover card. It pays to discover. The car that pays you back. Hey, want to see some cool things? Where? At the Smithsonian. The famous Flyers! The four-wheeler Tucker made 51 of these cars. Washington Soul. Rocket ships. Dizzy Gillespie's trumpet. Lizard lips. The Smithsonian. Discovered. And Discover Card is proud to be partners in the anniversary celebration. Jaws. How many credit cards make a statement like that? Selling a house is no vacation, but that's just what the Walkers got when they sold their house with our ERA office. The ERA Seller Security Plan guaranteed that if we didn't sell their house, ERA would buy it. ERA even agreed to take the risk of selling the house at a loss. When we sold it for more, the Walkers got the profit. They used the extra money to take a vacation. The ERA Seller Security Plan, just the kind of help you'd expect from a friend. Call 1-800-865-9992. ERA, first in service. Got any Tylenol, Cal? Getting one of those headaches. Hmm. You taking Tylenol now? Yeah. My doctor recommended it when he told me I have an ulcer. No kidding. Mm -hmm. My wife has an ulcer. My doctor said Tylenol won't aggravate my ulcer. It sure stops my headaches. You know, I don't know if Cash talked to her doctor about this. If you have an ulcer, Tylenol is the pain reliever recommended most by doctors. Talk to your doctor. Don't you just love the rain? Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Beginning this winter, 
And for every championship season to follow, a new network dedicated to covering sports as never before. From CNN and Sports Illustrated, from CNN SR. Around the clock coverage of sports news from around the world. Ask your cable or satellite provider about CNN SI, the 24 hour sports news network. The Rams hosting the 49ers today. That's where our Peter King is, the senior writer for Sports Illustrated. And Peter has his notebook uh, segment for us now. But, Peter, let's uh, start off with the Jeff George situation. Uh, will we actually see a trade this week? The deadline is Tuesday. I still think that you're going to see the trade because it's the most sensible thing, Vince, Jeff George to Seattle. The reason it's sensible is because the, the, uh, the, the Falcons need a quarterback. Seattle needs a quarterback. I believe Seattle has given up now on Rick Meyer in the wake of his four-interception game last week uh, against the Packers in the Kingdom. And the key thing here is if Jeff George doesn't go there, what happens? If he for some reason turns down the deal, what, whatever, what happens? Now, he could obviously elect to become a free agent if the Falcons cut him on Wednesday. I believe if there's no trade, then the Falcons would cut him on Wednesday because June Jones has no intention right now uh, of bringing him back. One other note here, I think that, that if the Raiders sign Jeff George, I think there's a strong possibility that, that Jeff Hostetler could be so incensed about this that he staged some sort of job action. Hmm. That would be interesting to watch. All right, the NFL Executive Committee had a big meeting this week, Peter. What did they come up with? Well, they were told this week in New York that it's, it's in, in all likelihood the salary cap next year is only going to go up seven hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars that's only a two percent rise you know it's less than the cost of living it's the lowest rise in the five years of the cap now what this means is that the prominent free agents next year guys like Elvis Gerbach of the 49ers Steve Everett the center from Baltimore the guys who are gonna get get a lot of play in all likelihood are gonna get less money than they would have in a normal free agent season all right Peter people ask me all the time what does Peter King do in his spare time and I tell him well, he does things like this that took the top 10 picks of the last five drafts and he did a little update on these guys and what did you find well, uh, some very interesting things. First of all, I mean, it's so evident now, looking at the top ten picks over these five drafts, that a lot of teams are spinning their wheels and wasting money. By the end of this season, these teams for these 50 players will have spent over $350 million. And you see Kajana Carter demoted this week. And, and you look at the, at the crop overall, the top 50 players... There's been 18 guys right now who are non-starters. And only 14%, Vince, only seven guys have played in a Pro Bowl. I think one of the key things here is it points, how, it points out how val uh, fallible the scouting process is. One other point I would make is, you know, what's the solution here? And I think the solution is gathering as many draft choices as you possibly can, like Jimmy Johnson has done both in Dallas and Miami. He's already got two extra picks from, for next season. Now, you get guys like Kajana Carter, in, or I'm sorry, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the third round, and Zach Thomas in the fifth, and those guys are, are the favorites right now for the uh, offensive and defensive rookies of the year. Yeah, follow Jimmy Johnson's lead. That's always a good plan. Peter, we have to wrap you up now. We'll see you for the picks in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at the brand new USA Today CNN Top 25 in college football. And here it is. And there's no change at the very top. The Florida Gators are still number one. But look at Ohio State, the Buckeyes. Thanks to their second straight big win, the Bucks jump up uh, over Florida State, moving to number two. Ohio State is making a, a real move. They're 32 pole points behind top-ranked Florida. Florida State drops to three, then Nebraska and Arizona State, though the Cornhuskers did beat the Sun Devils. Miami moves up to number six. The Hurricanes idle yesterday. They play host to Florida State on Saturday. Tennessee, Bama, Penn State drops to nine, and then Colorado. LSU. LSU. Creeping up with the polls. Notre Dame is now 12. Then Michigan losing to Northwestern yesterday, North Carolina, and then West Virginia. Washington moving up two spots to 16. Then Virginia, Northwestern, Auburn, and BYU. And the final five in the poll go like this. Kansas State, California, Virginia Tech, Wyoming, and then Texas. Back with the picks and the final words in just a moment. I whack the weeds. <laughs> So you want to know what's on my Discover Card statement. I'm a camp cook and a bad one, but I've got a good stove. And he loves to chase that. <laughs> the 
cash back bonus award. It all folds up into it, Carrie. Uh, she loves to get flowers, and I love to give them. How many credit cards make a statement like that? Well, the toughest thing about uh, buying a wetsuit is, is trying them on. It pays to discover. <laughs> Use it where you see the Noah sign. Got any Tylenol, Jill? Oh, when did you switch to Tylenol? When my doctor told me some pain relievers could irritate my stomach. Really? Pain relievers? Yeah, my doctor said that aspirin and even ibuprofen can sometimes irritate your stomach. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. But Tylenol doesn't, and it works great. To avoid the chance of stomach irritation, Tylenol is the pain reliever recommended most by doctors. How's your stomach? Stuffed. Oh. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Okay, here we go with the picks and those great drawings. My kids love those drawings. James and Peter, both 10 and 4, and Ron, a game behind at 9 and 5. And here are the picks this week, the big one out of the AFC West. Chargers and the Broncos, everybody across the board picking the Denver Broncos in this game. The Colts and the Bills. Let's take a look at that one, the Colts and the Bills. Here we go. And Ron, you're the only one who likes the Colts in this game. Why is that? Oh, Captain Courageous, Captain Comeback, whatever you call him. Harbaugh, a vote for Harbaugh all the way, Vince. All right. And uh, James, we know you're going to pick the Buffalo Bills come hell or high water. Right. <laughs> all right. Now the sure thing. Let's take a look at the sure thing. These guys know what's going to happen. Same old sorry-ass Rams, I guess. <laughs> exactly <James>. right. <laughs> Ron, you like the Lions to beat the Falcons. And then Peter, you're putting a lot of stock in Craig Erickson, the new quarterback for the Dolphins. You think he can beat uh, the Seahawks? I'm also putting some stock in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar after hurting his neck on Wednesday, dressing today. A game-time decision just decided 10 minutes ago. All right, very good. Thank you for that late information, and thank you guys for sitting in, and thank you for watching at home. That's going to do it for NFL Preview on this week. We'll see you next Sunday, everybody. Enjoy the NFL day. Go on. Hello, I'm Bob Kane. For a look quickly now at your weekend weather, Byron Miranda. Byron. Morning, good afternoon, all kind of good stuff. Uh, tropical depression number 10. Wind speed's now at 35 miles per hour. It is moving towards the east-northeast at 6 miles per hour. 390 miles south-southeast of New Orleans, tropical depression, depression number 10 continues to bring showers through the southern section of the Gulf Coast all the way from New Orleans back to Tallahassee. What does it all mean? Well, we expect this storm possibly to intensify within the next 24 hours. If it does, that means more rain, but more rain's already on the way for the southern section of the U.S. It could make tropical storm status and call it Josephine. The rest of the U.S., the eastern half, is quiet, cooler in the Ohio Valley through the midsection of the U.S., but absolutely hot from the southwest to the Great Basin into southern California, anywhere from 75 to 90 degrees or 95 degrees. If you move it over to the valley in southern California, you go over to the beach about 75 at Venice Beach, up towards northern California, San Francisco, Guess what? 85. Unseasonably warm there, Bob. It pays to be out west. Now back to you. All right. Thank you, Byron. CNN Late Edition now just minutes away. And for a preview of that, let's go to Frank Sesno in Washington. Frank. Hello, Bob. Well, just ahead, we'll talk with U.S. Secretary of State Warren Christopher. He's in Jerusalem as new Middle East peace talks get underway. And in the United States, one of them will be President Bill Clinton, Bob Dole. They'll debate. We'll hear from their campaign managers along with Mario Cuomo and Bill Bennett next on Late Edition.